Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the True Life Podcast. Maybe it's 8 o'clock at night where you are if you're in Hawaii, or maybe it's 8 in the morning if you're in South Africa. But wherever you are, I hope that you are ready to hear a message that resonates. It seems to me that we've been going through some growing pains in our life, and the world is changing. For those of us who have ears to hear and eyes to see, the changes are everywhere. It's in your body. It's in your relationships. And we're going to talk to someone from Mission Limitless today, the one and only Taryn Ings. Taryn is the co-founder of Mission Limitless, a sanctuary for purpose-driven, heart-centered souls committed to profound change. And as we stand united globally, the foundation rests on heart-centered philanthropy and the sacred principle of universal sovereignty. In the vibrant community, they envision the future of business, a harmonious convergence under universal law, driven by a collective mission to serve humanity and uplift Mother Earth and all her inhabitants. Understanding the imperative of inner work for authentic service, they extend a warm invitation resonating with the depth of your heart. Should you seek guidance on aligning with your highest purpose, their embrace of awareness stands ready to illuminate your path. At Limitless, their offerings are as diverse as the unique journey you tread, from transformative healing and inner work to the embodiment of your higher self. I recommend everybody go down to the show notes and check out the links. Go and check out all the free guides they have down there. They have gotten some incredible writings. They're really heartfelt, and I've read through them, and I think that they're wonderful. And we're gonna we're gonna learn a lot more about them today. So, Taryn, thank you for being with us today. How's it going over there? Good. Thank you, George. Thank you for having me on. It's uh, just sharing with Ben this morning. I haven't really done this for about two years. Um, I went on a bit of a, a wild truth speaking mission in 2020 when everything went down. And um, it's it's awesome to be able to share again. We've all got codes for people, and we've all got experiences that resonate. And uh, you know, for me, I just want to share for those who resonate. Um, it's been an amazing journey, and South Africa is amazing. Um, really grateful that I was born here. Um, my experience, <clears throat> excuse me, it's been more freedom here than I've observed around the rest of the world, you know, in the last couple of years, what's been going on. So really grateful. I am a rebel at heart. So I probably would have been uh, arrested very soon anywhere else in the world. So I'm really grateful I was born here. So thank you. <clears throat> yeah, there's something to be said about someone who can speak truth to power. And I think that there's there's that fighting spirit in all of us where maybe that's the spirit of life, huh? Maybe the spirit of life just doesn't want to give up. What do you think? So just a brief little overview of, of my journey. You know, yeah. I run about eight years old. I had a superhero complex where I didn't really know why I was here. I felt so much. Um, people were mean. Um, you know, there was so much control and manipulation that I could feel from that age. I literally felt like I was born into a straitjacket. Mm. And I didn't kind of understand why I felt like I didn't fit in. And going through life, you kind of have to play the game in a way to, right. to survive the system, you know. But I was always questioning things. And, you know, ended up going through a phase where I think it was more escape, where I partied too hard and I drank too much. And, you know, that was that was kind of a life I was living. But there was always a part of me that was always searching for more. I've always been a truth seeker. Maybe it's the Aquarian side of me. Um, you know, I've always, I've always been a rebel. I've always done and said a lot of things that other people won't because I was always searching for the truth. And not 80% truth. I wanted whole truth. That's what I've always wanted. Um, became a mom and um, you know in between that time it was always about searching for energy I experienced Reiki I experienced past life regression I experienced most of the things that is in the spiritual world but it was always a piece of the puzzle it was never like okay I found everything and when my daughter was two I stumbled across an Illuminati video of what we know goes on um, I don't know how I found it um i was horrified i didn't sleep for a long moment but this was 11 years ago and i kind of 
got to see how dangerous it was when you spoke about that stuff. And I kind of silently prayed and was trying to figure out how we get away from the darkness on the world, in the world. Then in 2020, when kind of a lot of two speakers came online, I jumped on the bandwagon. I've been like, I've been holding this inside of me for a very long time. The other people that have the awareness and I just went live every single day for kind of two years. In that process of going deeper into finding truth, my, my life path is seven. So my biggest challenge is trusting myself. And I was, nobody would have thought, but I was probably the most insecure person in the room if I walked in somewhere. I would look like I was fully confident and I could, I could speak well and I, was, I did well with people and I was really good at sales. But internally, I was always seeking external validation. I was always hanging on other people's words because I couldn't trust me. Um, and when I when I found these these tools and disciplines and and realized that our power is within, there's nothing external that would ever give us what we're really searching for, which is that inner connection. We're all God with God. There's nothing external. No one is coming to save us. Um, no one else has better answers for your life than you do. And when I practiced, and it was a process of, you know, the self-love disciplines, and we never arrive anywhere. It's always layers and layers of uncovering. You know, it's it's never well done enough um, there. The minute you think that, um, you know, this whole tidal wave of, of new challenges and new tests. Um, are we on? I saw I, we glitched there for a second. Yeah, I think we're um, back. <laughs> coming from a corporate space, going into, you know, busy and we've got this competition for who's the first and who's the most hectic and, you know, slowing down and actually nurturing my soul was a challenging experience. Because when I would sit on the grass and just be with nature for 15 minutes, there were 100 thoughts that would go through my head where I should be chasing money, I should be on emails, I should be doing something where we human beings, not human doings. And the minute I slowed down and open and receive, which is the feminine energy, because in um, the system, I don't know if we're still on. Everything's frozen. Yeah, it kind of keeps it kind of keeps glitching okay. on us. Sorry, I'm not, sure, I'm not sure what's going on because my everything on my side seems good. Yeah. Um. In the in the in the system, we're taught to work hard for money. We're taught to chase. We're taught to force, manipulate, control. Where the minute you slow down and you receive, everything blossoms around you. I was very much in my masculine. Uh, you know corporatism, masculine dominated space. So, you know, women feel like they need to build their masculine side in order to survive in that space. Where the feminine energy is really powerful. So finding that balance too. I mean, we've got a balanced harmonic side on the on the website too that teaches you how to bring those energies because we both have masculine and feminine within us. We are the Trinity. We've got the masculine, we've got the mother, the father, and the and our inner child. And we've got to heal all of those aspects. And you know, it's always funny when people are on this, like, I have to find my twin flame. Hmm. Um, you know, there's this obsession, and they they will watch every single reading, and you know what I mean? That they, they, there's like this obsession with it, where the twin flame relationship is within. Before Ben and I connected, I was like, I'm done. Um I'm going to do the rest of my mission on my own. I'm going to build my empire. I'm going to change the world. I'm going to find people. And I was so happy in that space because I'd, I'd been practicing the balanced harmonics. I'd done a lot of inner child healing. And when I was like, I'm so happy just being me, that's when, you know, you activate that divine counterpart and a relationship which is supportive and not controlling and non-judgmental and you know holding space and all that kind of stuff which is beautiful which is something i've never experienced before but it all starts with us nurture the garden of eden within and the garden of eden then is reflected out into your 
external reality. And it, it definitely does work that way. Um, but people have to try it in order to have the experience. And it sounds simple because it is simple. And love is simple. It's only the ego in the system that complicates things. You know, I heard about the IM affirmations seven years before I ever attempted them. I was like, there's no way something so simple can have such a pound a profound effect like I was like there's no ways and then I did it and I was like oh my gosh I wish I started doing this seven years ago mm. you know it's like looking in the mirror connecting with your eyes and saying your I am affirmations is really connecting with your soul your higher self you building that relationship and breaking down all the lower belief systems that we have about ourselves that have that have been created to serve the system not good enough so what do we do we, we support a consumerism market because you know we buy all the things that we think is going to make us feel better where it's a black hole if we don't build that internal love for ourselves yeah it's interesting to see the way we act out to try to fill a void in our own heart <clears throat> What, what are some of the I am affirmations that you use? Maybe you could tell a story about like maybe one or two that really, you really saw like a lot of change in your life after using them. Maybe you could tell people what they are and how you used them and some changes that you saw. So in the beginning, I really had to get into gratitude because okay. gratitude is the biggest shift. The more you complain about, the more you complain, the more you attract experiences to complain about. The more grateful you are, the more you attract things to be grateful for. Okay. And, you know, I did have a, a, a complaining mindset in the beginning, you know, um, a bit of victim consciousness, like blamed everything, you know, the, the government, you know, and, and South Africa has that, you know, where it's like the government and they're corrupt and all that kind of stuff. We still have to take accountability for co-creating, excuse me, the shit show that we live in. Yeah. Because we've all collectively manifested it. So we need to collectively transform it and take accountability that we all bought the story. And we all have the power to change it. And, you know, a lot, of, a lot of things only exist in our reality because we focus on them. Mm. You know, 3D land only really exists because we give it so much attention. If we all had to put our vision towards new earth and love and unity and forget about all the stuff that's been going on, we'll manifest it like this. But people are still, you know, moaning about chemtrails or you know, 5G or <clears throat> whatever it is. And the minute you're giving so much energy to something that you don't want, you are actually holding it, holding onto it and keeping it in your physical reality. So the minute you're like, well, that doesn't actually matter. I'm more powerful and all that. This is what I want. And you give more energy to what you want. What you want starts manifesting in your life. And that's just how energy works. Nothing exists without the observer. It sounds like a complicated term, but that's exactly what it is. Whatever you're focusing on, you create more of. You're empowering that. You're feeding it. You're fueling the fire. Um, and, you know, the first time, even before I started the I Am Affirmations, somebody said to me, have you ever looked at yourself in the mirror and said, I love you? And I had never done it. So I was like, okay, this is this is the first thing I need to do. So I closed myself in the bathroom and I stood there. And it was, you know, oh, you got another wrinkle and oh, you got this and oh, you're getting a gray hair. And like every excuse under the book to not actually make eye contact with myself and say it. it took me 45 minutes standing there before I was able to really genuinely look in my own eyes and say, I love you. And the feeling was insane because it's like if you have a if you buy a puppy and you go out for the day and you come home and you know the puppy's on the other side of the door and its whole body's wagging and its tail's going ballistic and it's knocking everything over because it can't wait to see you. That is the feeling I felt where my soul was like, You finally see me. <laughs> 
and it was emotional and it was beautiful and this was something that I definitely needed to nurture. And what I often say to people in the beginning, if they're not sure what I'm affirmations to start with, is what do you struggle with? Do you struggle with worthiness or unworthiness? Then I am divine worthiness. If you struggle with lack consciousness, I am divine abundance. And I always use the word divine because you want the highest frequency of that energy. Not just I'm abundant, but I am divine abundance. So I am, I am, you know, infinite godlike abundance. It does change it. For me, I love the power of five. So I didn't just say it once. I say it five times. Because the first time is kind of not a superficial layer, but the more you say it, the deeper it anchors in and the more you transform any belief systems. Because your ego will come and say to you, no, you're not. And the more you affirm it, the more the ego kind of, gives in and you know there's so much controversial and different belief systems around the ego it's not our personality it's not something you can integrate it's not something you can heal it's a designed set of lower life draining belief systems that have been created by the dark controllers for 27,000 years to enslave us because they cannot Anyone who's sold their soul or or in the dark or whatever you call it, they cannot exist above 200. So they have programmed humanity with fear, pain, and suffering to keep them there to feed their system. They cannot reach higher levels. So when you are building that relationship with your higher self, when you are moving upwards from courage and you're going from like 300 upwards, you are safe. When you're in your heart, you're safe. When you're in your mind, you tapped into the illusion. And you you literally plugged into the programming device. And the ego is the mind. And people get confused between the brain and the mind. The mind is like a virus that is running in the brain. The ego wants to keep you safe, they say, but keep you safe and comfortable it doesn't there's no growth in the comfort zone and there's no comfort in the growth zone so ego wants to keep you comfortable and do what you like and you know, you know doesn't like change change is the only constant and the ego programming i mean when i first did research around the ego i thought it was vanity um bragging i thought there were maybe three ego traits sorry i don't know if there's anything coming up i don't think yeah but you know, lack of gratitude is an ego trait. <clears throat> Feeling unworthy is an ego trait. Victim consciousness is an ego trait. So when you have awareness of what the truth of the ego is, you you do want to set intentions to dissolve it because it's almost like you've got your being and you've got this ego wall and you've got your soul or your higher self. And the ego is like a soundproof wall. You can't trust yourself. You don't even feel your heart because most of us have shut our hearts down. I did. Um, And the more work you do to dissolve the ego, you kind of dissolve this soundproof wall between your meat suit or your flesh body and your soul. And you start really trusting yourself. And then you start building that. So I'm affirmations, build that relationship with your higher self. It's affirming your God self. And then you don't need any external validation. I mean, you know, if I went somewhere and I had had to pick out an outfit, I'd ask the mom, my sister, my best friend, I knew what I want to wear, but I'd ask everyone else's opinion. <laughs> you know, a job. What do you think? What do you think? No, I'm like, I don't care about what anyone else thinks, feels, whatever. Like, I trust me. I'm here to live my life and I know what's best for me. And it's it's the most amazing way to live, especially when I've known the opposite. So I, you know, we just share limitless is not about me and Ben. Mm. Limitless is everybody. You know, we don't we don't want to be followed, we don't want to like, you know, save anybody, we don't want to heal anybody. No one can heal anyone. And so many people have said to me, Thank you, Sarah, and so much, like you helped me. 
like I mean, I've had people saying literally like you saved my life and I'm like, it's amazing that I've been able to help, but you did the work. I was just the messenger. I can't do the work for you. I can share, I can inspire, I can motivate, but I cannot make anyone do the work and I cannot do the work for anybody. But those that have taken this and have applied it to their lives, I have seen the most incredible transformations and empowerment and people stepping into their purpose and their power because we all came here encoded with a role to play in this time. And it is the biggest event in all of creation. I mean, to be here right now and to have the awareness that we we do of, of the changes that are coming is such an honor and a privilege, you know, that we we are here right now um, for the the greatest event in all of creation. Um, and it's an experiment, you know, other planets when they ascend, the beings on the planet have been evacuated, the planet has ascended and they've been put back. On planet Earth, we are ascending with the planet. And that's why it's so difficult because the planet is purging, but so are we. So anyone who's having, you know, flu-like symptoms or chest colds or anything like that, it's not a sickness. It's just the toxins and the density in your body that's asking to be released. And everything has an emotional cause, an energetic emotional cause or a belief system. And all we got to do is is look at that. You know, if, if people are battling with throat stuff, it's often a blocked throat chakra. Are you speaking your truth? Mm. Are you honoring you? If someone has chest issues, it's often somebody who's not in the heart. So everything is related and everything comes down to, to energy. And are you letting it flow? Or are you suppressing it? Because a dis-ease... Or disease is a dis-ease in the body. It's an uneasiness. Something's not able to flow. Um, so, yeah. Sorry, we went from I'm affirmations to I do that. <laughs> no, it's all, it's good. I think it's all relevant information. And I always like when people take some extra time to fill in a background. I, I think they people tend to speak about things that are they're passionate about and they want to. And I, I think it's a it's a great way for us to learn more about you. We, and I, I love the idea that you had mentioned about you guys aren't doing the you guys aren't doing the healing like the people do the healing and you're you're giving away w- tools and techniques and ways and and just pretty much reaching out and helping people as much as you can. We spoke a little bit about affirmations and helping. Maybe we could talk a little bit about ascension. Like, what does that mean for some people? Are just hearing that word now? Like, and maybe it sounds alien or foreign to them. Maybe you could speak about. What ascension means for individuals, for the planet, and for relationships? It's it's pretty simple. It's just going into higher levels of consciousness, which is love. So it's moving from the head to the heart. Mm -hmm. I like that. It's moving from separation to unity. Because we are all one. The the and you know, I, I don't I don't know how how much this may trigger some people but i've always wanted whole truth and i've questioned everything from a very young age so i went to sunday school as as a young child and i didn't get it why everybody was participating and i didn't feel it i didn't feel communion take partaking in eating someone's body and drinking someone's blood. I was like, that's weird. Like, no, thank you. Um, I didn't get how there was a masculine with all these children and no feminine. On planet Earth, my mother gives birth to me. So within, so without, so above, so below. Where was the feminine energy? And it was very conditional and very fear-mongering. And I was like, I'm out. And I'm so grateful my parents never forced me into anything. They've always let me be. And through my journey, um, I questioned more things and more, more truth started coming out. And the biggest lie ever sold to humanity 
is that God is a man. And I know people are very att attached to that, but for me, whole truth heals. And the reason why this was manipulated and sold is because it was the first wound of separation that was implanted in humanity. The first mother wound was created. Because the feminine is the nurturer. She holds compassion. She keeps people together. She's a healer. We were. We weren't witches burned to the stakes. We were healers. We were, we were love. And that didn't serve the system. So prime source creator is the feminine energy. You have a mother God and a father God, but women give birth. They create life. And God as the, as the seed of creation is feminine. The masculine is the support and the creator. I mean, the um, manifester who takes action from the inspiration that comes from the feminine. And that is what balanced harmonics is, and that's what we need to do within. Our feminine energy receives inspiration from source. Our masculine side of energy takes action. So it's love in action. You receive the inspiration from love, you take action on what you receive. So I've been, I've been, I've been battling this, and I've had huge resistance and all that kind of stuff, but it's fine. I'm not here to please people or walk on eggshells. I'm here to share truth with those that resonate. And there's so much truth coming out. I mean, you can do research on um, the Dead Sea Scrolls. There's a lot of this. I mean, there were 777 books in the Bible originally. There's only 66 in the traditional Bible that people read or whatever. I've, I've been honest. I've never read it. I've heard scripture. I've never read it. It's never resonated for me and that's me i don't i don't judge anyone who does but i've always been a very deep truth seeker I've always 100 truth and it was always like okay this is 80 percent. i want more and what we have to and i don't like the word have to but i feel it's important to say we have to be open to be empty to mm. every single belief system that we have taken on, you know, everything <laughs> has been a lie. And it's a scary reality for people to face. You know, it's, it's like we spoke the other day about don't look at the sun. The sun's bad for your eyes, you go blind. The, one of the most amazing spiritual disciplines is sun gazing. Staring into the sun for 10 minutes and sunrise and sunset. The codes you get dissolve the ego like there is amazing benefits in that. But everybody walks on with sunglasses on because they're so scared of the sun. And wearing sunglasses all the time, they call cellular suicide because everything that's received through your eyes is then interpreted by the brain and sends signals to your body. So if, if your eyes is telling your body it's dark all the time, it's not setting off your vitamin D receptors. And vitamin D is very powerful for the immune system. Then yeah. people smother themselves in sunscreen. And, uh, you know, since, since I was young, I've loved the sun. And, you know, everybody used to say to me, you're going to get cancer, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, no. Like, do the plants wear sunscreen? No. Mm -hmm. And they have to have the sun and look how beautiful they look. Like, I don't want to put stuff on my body with words that are this long that I don't know what they're doing. I'm like, I'm out. And, um, you know, more and more truths coming out that, you know, it is the sunscreens that are, you know, creating... The, the skin, I mean, we know all the stuff that's busy coming out at the moment, but we have to empty ourselves of every single belief system because so much of it is not true. And be open to recognizing truth by the way it feels. Mm. And it's in our hearts because our minds will lie. How many times have we had red flags come up in our bodies about business partnerships, relationship partnerships, people and experiences, some, or your, your 
your peers are saying you got to do this and inside you like i don't want to do it right. and you do it's the ego mind that is the liar but if you can move from the head to the heart make the effort to dissolve the ego anchoring that heart it will serve you because you recognize truth by the way it feels and that and that's the only guidance we need we don't need anyone external telling us what to do we need to purely go by that inner trust but it takes work i i did the self disciplines consistently for 18 months i had small changes happening in my life but after 18 months the most radical shift in my life i could ever imagine because we, you know, we go to school, we live in a system, blah, 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 um, for our lives. It doesn't take five minutes to undo all that programming. You go to school for 12 years or whatever. You can't do the self-love practices or the spiritual disciplines for a week and think everything is going to change. <laughs> so, you know, with, with Limitless, the original goal was with new earth coming and the ascension coming and sorry i've gone off topic a little bit again no it's perfect is we cannot build new earth with the same consciousness that created the old one and that was all mind based it was all ego based it was all in separation everyone's competing i want this i want the best house i want the best car i want the best job for me i want to know who are you without your car without your house without your business card without your title who are you then that's what i'm interested in i'm not interested in anything else. what's in your heart that's all i care about and we we want to support everybody in being in the heart because the qfs the new quantum financial system is going to be based on heart frequency so create a energetic container of heart-centered beings that will do the best for all of humanity when the abundance comes and people like being the heart but it's like telling someone if they're struggling to lose weight oh you must just go lose weight how people i didn't know how to do it yeah until i found these tools and it drastically changed my life. And all I want is for people to experience what I have. But it's a choice at the same time. How bad you want. I wanted a different life really, really badly. Right. So this was my priority every single day, no matter what. Before breakfast, before coffee, before emails, before looking at my phone, this was my priority. And, you know, in, in South Africa, and I'm sure around the world, having sessions with somebody who has these tools is a luxury. And I, we didn't feel that it was fair to charge people for this information. And that's why we put everything out for free. You don't need us for anything. Everything is there. And it's up to you how deep you want to go whatever you resonate with, wherever you are on your journey, there's something that will either support you, confirm things for you, will be the next step. Um, and so many people that have walked this journey with us, if we had charged, they never would have had access to it. And I don't, I feel the truth should be free. We, we do offer sessions to people. There's a lot of information to simulate. If, if they really want a fast track and they really like, we'll, we'll have a session. But I don't want to create codependent people. I want to empower people. And there's so many people out there not calling anybody out. But what in, in my own experience is they love the 500 rand a week. Mm. So come to me. I'm your healer. I'll give you the answers. I'll do all of this kind of stuff. And people become addicted mm -hmm. to or codependent on somebody because they're given their power away. It's not what this journey is about. It's about empowering each person to anchor in their higher self, their purpose, so that we can all co-create new earth and exactly what we signed up for 
before we came here because we came here in, in amnesia we're very powerful beings we've created planets before the best of the best are here and when you build that relationship with your higher self it all returns and you know exactly what you're here to do so yeah i love it you know it's uh, you often hear that the usefulness of a cup is in its emptiness Right, a cup is something that we need in order to fill up. And when I hear, I can't help but resonate with the idea of lies. Like history is a set of lies agreed upon. Depending where you were born, you were fed one sort of lies. And on some level, you can see the need for, you know, shared sacrifice or shared goals. And and but at at some point in time. I think people can look back on their life when it doesn't make sense because it doesn't. Like all these things that you were taught, like how much of those are true? And when you start finding yourself on that road, I think that that for, for me anyways, that was one of the first shoes to drop. That was like one of the first cracks or glitches in the matrix is like none of this makes any sense. And you start asking people you think are wise and then all of a sudden you realize that that person is just repeating something they heard. Like they don't, they don't know. And it's, it can be scary, but at the same time, it should be empowering. It should be all these things that you talked about. It should be an opportunity for you to dig deep into who you are. Like that's what I, I really find so compelling about your story is that I love listening to people talk about how they made changes in their life, how they figured it out. And you know, what was it for you? Was there like a certain point that you just said, not anymore? Or was it like a slow buildup or Maybe you could address two points. One is, was there a defining point that you can remember where you just said enough is enough? And two, how did you continue to walk down that path? Because sometimes it's easy to stray to have that courage. You know, you have all these people pulling you back. Maybe you could talk about those two things. I think there was, you know, a, a series of events. I, I compromised who I really was mm. so many times in my life. And, you know, I, I did my life to keep people happy. Yeah. And I got divorced in 2017. And I think that probably was the biggest catalyst because it was like, my whole old life was gone. And it, it was this weird space to be in. And I could totally reinvent myself. Yeah. Uh, I could totally step into me. And yeah, I, I do feel, look, from, from young, yeah. I felt too much um i could feel everyone i could feel everything i hated the way animals were treated i hated the way people were treated um i didn't like bullying blah 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 i must be honest i've danced with suicide many times in my life i didn't want to be here i couldn't understand why i was here i i didn't mm. know how i was going to find joy in this place and you know got into corporate and you know you kind of think well, the system kind of makes you feel that if you make money, yeah. you can buy happiness. And I've had I've had loads of money where I basically could do whatever I wanted. And I've also had stages where I've had 10 rand in my bank account for a week. And you realize how far money can go. Yeah. So it's been a very polarity, you know. Um, yeah. But I always had that tiny spark of my superhero complex that mm. I had when I was little and I, I, I really want to change the world. And I want to see everybody happy and I want to every animal treated with respect. And I, you know, and part of me thought it was fantasy, but there would always be something that would keep me going. A synchronicity. I mean, I, I love animations. Yeah. I really love animations. Um, and, and, Everything is showing you something. 
and yes, there, there's the dark side of the programming, but there's so many codes of truth. Hmm. And, you know, I watched Avengers Endgame, I don't know how many, five years ago, whatever, hmm. and I got out of the movie house and I'm like, do people understand how real this is? You know, where our family of light come and, and, and step in, all of them, this unity at the end and, and take out the dark forces. I'm like, people just sit up for entertainment. Like, I was like, this is real. I watch Frozen 2 uh, with my daughter. She's 13 now. Nice. And I cried my eyes out because we are the fifth element. We have the power. It's about recognizing the power within us. Um, you know, and, and the call that I've been continued to have my whole entire life. Um, Moana, like huge, like I get body light ups when I think mm. of that, movie, you know, and that's mother earth. That's the divine mother. That's the feminine that was stolen. Like, and we've seen what's, what's played out. And I mean, you live in Hawaii, mm. you know, and then there's a story of Ho'oponopono, which I'm sure you probably have awareness of um i'm not sure but the story behind that is incredible and then recently we watched wish and it's it's stuff like that that's just kind of kept me going and and earlier you know i said i'd, I'd kind of dance with suicide and whatever but when i found these tools and I, and i started feeling and and seeing things and built that amazing trust and learned about the ascension and you know there's there's two timelines pretty much that people are choosing right now and the the timeline really started to split on the 11 11 portals on the 11th of november mm. because even sacred geometry was hijacked so you've got the fibonacci spiral and the seed of life it's actually this the seed of death that was even hijacked which was something that i've only learned of recently and we're moving on to the crystalline spiral so people have either got doomsday in their heads that the world's going to shit and that is the experience they are going to manifest for themselves or they're those that are super excited to build new earth and we're not going anywhere we're bringing heaven to earth we currently have been living on hell because this has not been a pleasant experience and as as the years have gone we've seen all the darkness come up so we are bringing heaven to earth and we all have a responsibility to co-create that but it's just been you know finding these tools and anchoring my higher self and and knowing what i'm here to do and and why i'm here and all this kind of stuff was me then going please don't take me like, I'm so excited. I don't ever want to leave. <laughs> the funny thing is, I was saying to Ben the other day, I, and when, when we go through the ascension, age is not in our DNA. It's an adopted belief system. We physically do not age in our DNA because we believe we do. And we, we have this belief, system, oh, I'm getting older. Everything that comes out of our mouths, every cell in our body is listening for an instruction. So people are like, oh, I'm broke. Oh, I'm sick. Oh, I'm tired. Guess what? Your body is responding and it's going to feel and create those things. Where if you're like, I'm excited, I'm empowered, I'm abundant, I'm excited, your body is going to respond to that. Every cell in our body is listening. So what are we telling ourselves all the time? What is the life that we that we want to live? But it's it's those um, affirmations and and all the tools. I mean, the ten loving actions are one of my favorites. You know, saying that every single day, you start living, breathing. You start becoming that. Mm. Um, and it's just has become a phenomenal way to live. But it's a choice. You know, and most choices are easy to make and easy not to make or easy to do, not, easy not to do. You know, you can get up and take five minutes and say your own affirmations in the mirror or you don't. But it's, it's how badly 
do you want this? And everything's based on intentions. Uh, what I've observed with people is if they take a piece of paper and they're like, oh, I'm just doing this for the sake of it. I'm just reading the 10 Love in Action codes and they don't feel it. Mm -hmm. The intention isn't this is who I want to be. It doesn't really make much difference. Where if people are all in and they feel every word and they literally bringing it into who they are, you don't need to take a long time to see the transformations. It's all down to, but everything's down to intention. You know, even, you know, you have people with money, money's good, money's evil, whatever. Everything works through intention. The intention behind everything will influence the outcome. And it's, I, I put a post out the other day and it's, it's Navy SEALs time. Hmm. It really is. It is Navy SEALs time. When I started sharing this stuff four years ago, I was like, we don't really have time because the world is shifting so fast. Now we really, 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 really don't have time. <laughs> because in January next year, it's big changes. Big, big, big changes. And if people aren't... If people are fence sitting, they're really going to have to jump because it's only going to get more intense, more confusing, more challenging for those that are hanging on to the old that doesn't really exist anymore it's only belief system and that's why emptying ourselves of belief systems and and like a clean slate that empty cup we spoke about it's so important because if you're attached to belief systems it's going to just make it harder yeah it's interesting to think about attachment and how the way you your belief systems are the building blocks with which you model reality. You know, and it's it's true to think about what is possible if you're willing to believe. It's one thing to say things that you want to do in your life, but you have to believe that you're not only that not only you can do it, but that you're doing it right now and that you've always had the choice to do it and that you chose the everything that's happened in your life has been a choice on some level. We are the sum of our choices, right? And if it's hard, I think, I think for me and some people that I know, that's a tough pill to swallow because we've been conditioned to feel like victims for a long time. We've been conditioned to think that things just happen to us or whatever. But the truth is, we are the summation of our decisions. And if that's true, it may be disheartening at first, but it should also be exciting because that means that you have your destiny in your hands. And it's interesting to see. I think a lot of people have noticed this sort of quickening. You know, when you speak to this idea that I think on January 20th is, is when we really move into the house of Aquarius. And how, how, yeah, Peter moved into Aquarius. Yeah. Is that what happens? Yeah. And that's going to be the catalyst of the big, the big change. Um, astrology plays a massive role, right? You know, and I've heard all sorts of things. It doesn't matter. You know, astrology is evil. Blah blah blah. Mm -hmm. um, it's not. Like all of those planets are within us. Like we may be a certain, a certain star sign, but we have all of those aspects within us. So within, so without. We are the tree. You cut us open, our lung looks like a branch of a tree. The veins that run through our bodies are like the rivers on planet right. Earth. We are one and the same. There's no separation yeah. from Earth. Earth is a living being. And, you yeah. know, in my journey, I've always wanted to be in service to the planet or to people or to animals or all sentient beings. And I did a lot of, you know, river cleanups and all that kind of stuff. I studied water for four years. Um, and what I realized that you can clean up the planet as many times as you like. 
But until you get people to love who they are, mm. nothing is going to change. Because if yeah. you don't respect you, you cannot respect another person. You cannot respect the planet. You cannot respect another animal because we treat others the way we feel about ourselves. Yeah, that's a great point. Everything is a mirror. Yeah. What what you see in me exists in you. It cannot be any other way. And that's that's the good, the bad, and the fugly. Because <laughs> if you look in a mirror, your reflection straight back at you. I'm not going to see your face. If I stare at a mirror, I'm going to see my face. I'm going to see me. But every single person around us is an aspect of us. So until we get people to fall in love with who they are, and not in a vanity way, right. but of the essence of themselves, they will continue to not care about the planet because essentially they don't really love and care about themselves. Yeah, it's a it's a good point. It's in some ways, you know, I sometimes I talk to a lot of people that will talk about mental illness or mental wellness. Sometimes I'll pull down my copy of like the DSM-5. It has all these different so-called diseases or disorders in there. And it's really interesting. If you take time to look through something like that, you realize that all these diseases that we have, they're just manifestations of a planet that's sick. You know, these are all maybe not... I'm sure that there are some neurological disorders and there are some real ailments that people are born with that could be birth defects. But it seems to me a large part of like the psychiatric illness in the world is a direct reflection of the misalignment with the way in which we're treating each other. You know, it's ways of people tuning out. It's ways of people dealing with unrealized dreams or traumatic episodes that have never been processed. Like it's, it's maddening to me. And on some level, I think a lot of people are welcoming these changes. Like I've spoken to so many people, Taryn, that are, that are feeling real changes in their lives. Like, and they're manifesting them on a level that's never happened before. And I'm, maybe like, maybe you could speak to this idea of, is it, on some level, you and Ben kind of have this rap on you. Like you guys are trying to make the world better, but is it difficult to to have this the this stuff kind of working through you? Like that that seems like it might feel odd in some ways. Like is that is it difficult to deal with? Like I know that you're trying to help people and give stuff away, but is it weird to have people kind of come to you and like seek out help sometimes? Like that, that seems like it would be an interesting relationship. I love when people come and seek out help. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's it's the attachment to belief systems and the resistance that's challenging. There you go. Because we're just sharing through experience that has helped us transform. I mean, right. you know, Ben will tell his story too. But, you know, I am the happiest I've ever been. I'm the most excited I have ever been. Um. It's the polarity of how I felt before, I cannot put into words. Um, so when, when people genuinely want to help themselves, I have all the time in the world. But when, when someone wants to, wants to kind of challenge me or all this kind of stuff, it, it doesn't matter. Like, I don't care. The thing is, I care so much about humanity, and that's why we've done what we've done. Right. I mean, we, we've literally spent, I don't know, hours and hours and hours and hours every single day since March this year putting these guys together. Um, you know, we, we've got our limited Telegram channel where we've done lots of, like, meditations together. We've also the same intention for the planet. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, I'm not attached. I don't have expectations. You know, whatever's real will remain. So the, the, the beings that I'm meant to co-create with, I will. The ones yeah. I'm not, I won't. But everybody's working their, walking their own journey. I'm grateful to be me. I'm grateful to have these tools. I'm grateful that I chose to use them. I'm grateful for the people who resonate. But sorry, things are getting rather windy here. Um, yeah, no worries. It's I'm not attached. 
if that makes sense. Like I care so much, but I don't care about the resistance or the the um, opinions or whatever. You know what I mean? That's I pray that everybody just empowers themselves and you know moves from the head to the heart and finds inner joy and. For me, I, I do feel a lot of disease and sickness comes when you are not living in integrity with your soul. Your body mm-hmm. is trying to communicate with you. There's your vehicle guiding you, and that's why you've got to trust the body. How does your body feel? If I listen to a – it's happened to me a few times on this journey right. since 2020. There, there are two speakers out there that, that share their stuff. If I, I'm able to pick up something in someone's voice. I know when you and, and Ben were, were chatting the other day, like – I stood there and I was like, I really want to connect with you. I can pick up a vibration in someone's voice. Yeah. And there's some people I've listened to for 20 seconds and I'm, I'm out. Like, I'm just, I don't feel them. And I trust that. But I just want everybody to have that own discernment because what is yeah. coming and the confusion, if people don't have that, they're going to fall for anything. Yeah. And it's not exact necessarily going to be for their highest good there's a lot of versions of truth out there and what we're saying is this will empower you to anchor in your own discernment to be able to trust your own journey to be able to trust you to fulfill your purpose to be love in action in whatever way you are meant to show up And that's that's kind of what it is. I mean, there's a there's a lot of resistance we get because yeah. And what I also feel is that people are. And somebody wrote something the other day. I posted about the awakening. People are happy to participate in the awakening as long as it makes them feel comfortable. You know, the awakening is like I'm going to find my twin flame, or I'm going to make more money, or I'm going to, you know, be happy. But they're not prepared to go through a massive ego death mm. to be reborn. And, you know, my, my corporate life and my, my life before, like, 2020 feels like reincarnations ago because I've had yeah. so many deaths since then that it doesn't even feel like the same life. And the ego will not go into 5D. It is almost like the MK Ultra programming, if you have to really put it straight. You know, they've done all the experiments in the brain. We were never supposed to have two hemispheres of the brain. Our brain is supposed to be a uni brain. The experiments that they did on humanity and like all of that kind of stuff separated the two hemispheres, the left and the right. The right is the creative, the left is the logic. We run our brains on the left side. Our right brains are taking over. Our left brains going into the ascension. We're going to have one whole brain. There's not going to be the separation. But where the resistance comes in for us sometimes is where people have still got certain belief systems that they're hanging on to. And because we challenge that, because I do feel we have emptied our cup significantly. There's always still things that I'm like, okay, well, I can't have attachment to that belief system. Like, I've got to be totally open. But it's like I have my safety net and I don't want you rocking it where you have to literally be able to be free and be able to expand as far as you can and not have those attachments because love is infinite. Love doesn't have rules. Hmm. And it's the unknown. <clears throat> and that's what we're moving into. Yeah. We're going to be co-creating in the present moment. And that's all we really have. The past doesn't exist. The future doesn't exist. All we have is right now. What we said five minutes ago is gone. And that's where love in action comes in because we have to be present in order to get that inspiration, to get the synchronicities. If I'm washing dishes, for example, and a message comes in or my higher self says to me, you got to phone so-and-so. I won't continue washing dishes. I will dry my hands. I will pick up the phone and I will phone that person because that's where the alignment of the magic is. 
So if you can live like that, <clears throat> excuse me, yeah. then it's it's where you're in a continuous flow of magic. But the ego goes, no, I'll do it later. Or I don't feel like it right now. Or, you know, um, I don't feel like speaking to anyone. It's not about us. We are vessels that are here to serve a much bigger picture. Yeah, it's interesting too. I love the idea of co-creation. And I think anybody who takes time just to think about that word or anybody who finds themselves in love with nature or an artist of some sort, or any, anytime you're doing something you're passionate about, I really think that you can begin to flirt with this idea of co-creation. It often seems like something is creating through us. And I like the term vessel that you use. I speak to a lot of different writers and one of the things I always ask them is, can you tell me about your writing process? And so many of them say something similar in that, oh, you know, George, I felt like something was writing through me. And I think that part of moving in the future and understanding the present moment is understanding that we're always co-creating with a force bigger than us. We don't really have the words to describe it right now, but I think we're on our way to figuring out what that is. And that's the flow state. It's this, it's this state where you're moving harmoniously through life and you are feeling as if you're one with everything around you. It's, I'm hopeful that more people can begin to, to have that because it's, it's a wonderful feeling. It is, it's in some ways, once you have it, there's a little bit of sadness because you realize for how long you've disliked yourself or you've been fed these ideas that you're not good enough or you're not strong enough. And, these things stay with us for so long. And a lot of times it might've been something our parents did that stays with us for the reason we don't like ourselves, but it's all kind of coming into focus. Now it, it seems like to me, what do you, does it, maybe you can, what do you think is if we, if, if we can agree that the best predictor of future behavior is past relevant behavior, and we're beginning to see these signs of a more harmonious life moving forward. What do you think are some of the things we can expect to see maybe next year and in the following years? I don't know. Um, we will all be creating our own reality. Yeah. You know, for for me, I, I went live for kind of two years, and then I was taken on a very different journey of massive tests of trust, faith, and big balls. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and I kind of, I, it was a very personal journey. It was very much, okay, you've done this work. Mm -hmm. Now, let's see what you got. <laughs> now the test. And it's a story for another time, but it was insane. Like I, I've always gone with, I love the analogy of the deaf frog. I don't know if you've heard that analogy of the deaf frog where there's a, a a frog that wants to climb to the top of this tower. And um, all the frogs around him said, you will never, ever, ever do it. <laughs> and he was like, I'm going to do it. So off he goes and he climbs this tower and all the frogs around him are going, you're never going to do it, boo, blah, 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 <laughs> blah. He gets up and he comes down. He thought they were all cheering for him because he was deaf. <laughs> So I've always been <laughs> the deaf rock. Mm. I I've I don't care for people's opinions. I don't care for their beliefs. I don't care for whatever. It's mm -hmm. like I will do it anyway. And that was kind yeah. of the journey I took in twenty. 21, 22. Um, and I have been feeling that I need to use my voice again. And I that's come through in my astrology too and in my gene keys and my human design. And these are all aspects of us that give us massive depth into who we are that I need to start speaking again. So thank you for giving me the opportunity. I haven't done this for two years. And um, nothing is by accident. Everything synchronicities and uh, magical events. So when when you and Ben connected 
the other day and offered to have me share, I was like, okay, this is this is the next part of the journey. This is this is a confirmation of of what's been coming. But it's it's up to each person to create the life they want. You know, we we've we've created worlds before. We God with God. You know, there's there's no external savior. We're all, all just aspects of source. We're all just channels of source energy to serve the bigger. Yeah. Um, you know, we all have our individual role and purpose, but it's there to serve the greatest good of all. And I do feel it will be dependent on each person as to what the next few years will look like. If they're going to be all in on themselves and it's Navy SEALs time and no matter who mm. likes me, who doesn't like me, who agrees with what I do, who doesn't like what I say, it doesn't matter. Because we're not here to be liked. We're not here to be followed. We're here to make a massive difference. And, you know, when, when I was in school, I would do anything to get out of a speech. <laughs> And my friends would say, well, put toothpaste on bread and it'll make you vomit and you don't have to go to school or drink shampoo. I would do that stuff because I could not speak in front of people. It was a phobia for me. And through my numerology and my astrology and my human design, it's like I have to put myself out there because I have codes. I've got a story that people will feel or resonate with or whatever. I was like, you've got to be kidding me. Like, this is something I've never wanted to do. Um, and it's been overcoming a lot of stuff like that on this journey. You know, I, I, don't, I don't want anyone to know who I am. I'm quite happy to be behind the scenes, hanging out with animals, um, you know. But it was a different plan. And I was, I was like, I'm all in. Like, whatever I have to do to be of service, I will do it. And you know that's where people have to have to get to. It's not what makes them comfortable. It's having to really step out of that yeah. and and be what we are meant to be um, at this time. You know, and it's funny. Yeah, the the true. last thing I, I ever want to do is is you know part of my purpose, um, which I always giggle at, but. Uh, I've grown and um, I'm just me. And, you know, it's it's just I share for those who resonate and those I can help and we just carry on going, you know? <laughs> yeah, I do. It's really well said. It's beautiful. I, I'm hopeful that people will go out of their way to become the best versions of themselves and know that it's it's not always an easy path. Like you said, sometimes... You have to make very difficult choices to let go of things in your life that you used to hold dear because you got to get rid of stuff so that you can grow. Yeah. And some people take longer than others. And mm. but I think we, yeah, I think we've got so have... room for better stuff to come in, you know. And that's that's what I learned, you know, mm -hmm. because we we have a fear of if we let something go, we we're never gonna. And and God always upgrades, <laughs> always. You never get downgraded. So if you let go of something that's not serving you, I can promise you like a thousand times better will come into your space. And so many, you know, of, of the people I've worked with and shared with and stuff like that, it, it, it happens every single time. They are so afraid to let go of a job, a relationship, a whatever. And the minute they, they choose themselves, their joy, their soul it's like they just go from here to here but it's that fear of whatever their belief systems are that stop them from doing it. same as my own affirmations i was like oh come on it's not going to change my life mm. it's even yours mm. gosh can you imagine if i did mm. it but it, everything is divine timing and we all have to be ready but well are we ever ready but mm. it's it's like when you take that jump it's like the universe just supports you. The minute you make the decision where I'm choosing me, I'm not, I'm not taking the money, I'm not taking the fear-based option, I'm choosing me, 
it's like you just get wings and mm. um it's fun yeah it's a lot of fun so yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's so amazing to me but Ter Ter this is amazing i feel like we've already blown through an hour like it feels like we just kind of began our conversation so but i'm going to talk to ben tomorrow and then i'll probably have you both back and you know we'll answer some other questions and i'm really thankful though i'm really thankful that you were very vulnerable like you were vulnerable and told things about you that maybe some people wouldn't share and i think that that's important i think that that is the way in which we get other people to become the best versions of themselves is by telling honest stories about who we are and the things we've conquered and why we've conquered them and the, the difficult parts about conquering them. And I think we did that today. I, I really appreciate it. And I, although we just scratched the surface, people listening, you should definitely go down to the show notes and check out missionlimitless.org, I think is the links down below. And there's so many guides down there. If you, when you, once you begin to see what Taryn and Ben have put together, just read through them. And they're re it's really beautiful and poetic in some ways. And, life-changing in others. If you can really read some of these things and find something that resonates with you, I think you could find something in there that can change your life on some level. If you're willing to make changes in your life and to have the courage to do it, I think Mission Limitless is a great place to go and start learning. So, But before I let you go, Taryn, is there anything else? Like, where is there some other places people can find you or do you got anything coming up and what are you excited about? So I... I recently joined LinkedIn. Um, to be honest, it was the it was the last place that I thought I would find a lot of, you know, spiritual awake people. I don't know. I think my previous experience on it was very much, um, you know, corporate uh, and that kind of stuff. Where Ben had a lot of traction, I was like, okay, I need to get onto here. But I've I've had a really successful platform of connection on facebook um we are on you know instagram and stuff i don't i don't really resonate with that platform and we've got a telegram group where we've got a lot of people that are practicing this work share their stories we when we do our meditations and all that kind of group stuff it's on there but yeah where to from here you know let's see present moments um big dreams want to want to change the world everybody says to me what do you want to do i'm like everything <laughs> you know for me it's it's conservation it's it's influencing so many industries in the positive one of my passions is the schooling system i took my daughter out of school three and a half years now um we had an email saying that they're going to bring in this transgender curriculum and i was like i'm out <laughs> I sent the school the email. I'm like, you will not be seeing my daughter again from Monday. It's non-negotiable. I'm not giving you notice. And we homeschooled for eight months. And now she's unschooling, if you can say that. She's very passionate about animals, does her own research. She's been earning money working with difficult horses because she has a real gift with earning their trust. And that's what she does every day. Um it's what was your question see i've gone on a tangent again no it's just just what you have coming up what you're excited about all the things you're answering yeah so so like we've got a blueprint for a crystal school which is basically right. just bringing gifts out of children because there's so much programming you know from young it's like control and obedience there's mm. one person in the class that tells you what to do when you can go to the bathroom, when you can do this, when you can do that, and it becomes this obedient. And I think the obedient citizen becomes a label that people want. You know, the government tells you to do this, and yes, I go and do it. Um, and, you know, we should be creating leaders. We should be enhancing natural gifts. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that we want to do is create crystal schools where we bridge the gap between the – all the generations, the grandparents and yeah. the the parents and the children, because so much wisdom is being shoved in an old age home and left where that wisdom, whatever that passion is, could be brought back into. And those are the teachers. Yeah. So if it's woodwork, if it's gardening, if it's animals, if it's painting, if it's creating things, if it's music, they have the freedom to 
have wisdom shared, that they can be that. Because there, there's too much separation everywhere. And, you know, co conservation is one part. It's, it's influencing industries. It's, it's so much. But I'm not attached. I've, I have all these intentions. But I'm open to whatever. You know, if I'm called to go and do work in Peru, I guess that's where I'm going. You know what I mean? <laughs> if it's, I'll just show up yeah. and, you know, follow the synchronistic events. Um, and that's how we know we're on the right path. And where there, if there's resistance, it's not the way. We can't force doors open. We have to just go where life is flowing because that is the correct path for us. We can't make something happen. And I, and I also feel you touch on, you know, the mental wellness part. Yeah. Um, the ego mind is dissolving in the high frequencies of love that are, that are entering the planet. The KP index, the, the solar flares, the, all that kind of stuff. It's literally burning everything away. So when people are realizing that the old ways of control, manipulation, forcing is not working anymore, it's going to drive them crazy because they're not going to understand it. So the journey from the head to the heart is very important because the ego mind is dissolving because it's inorganic. It was made to serve the 3D system. That is all breaking and falling away. So the focusing on anchoring in the heart, which is divine intelligence, will be our guidance system, not thoughts. You've got higher thoughts, but that is present moment connection to source. It's not fear-based thinking or making a plan or manipulation or any of that kind of stuff. It's, it's divine intelligence that comes through, but it's felt, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, it makes perfect and sense. Yeah, it's 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 going to be an individual journey for everybody, I feel. And those of lack vibration or frequency will come together to co-create the new. But it's not a it's not a it's a consistent thing. Because most of in our lives are probably seen and it's definitely happened with us that the people that are growing with you and they kind of stop or they devolve because it's not easy. They, yeah. they kind of go back into old patterns and old ways and all this kind of stuff. And then you continue to be consistent. You continue to grow and you elevate in consciousness, frequency, embodiment, whatever you want to call it. Not that I've arrived in any shape or form. But those people that don't want to continue fall away. And that's where the non-attachment comes in. Because there are people that we thought were going to play massive roles in, in our space going forward. And that's changed. So I take somebody in the present moment. And the present moment in January 2024 may be very different to how they're showing up now. They may accelerate in growth or they may evolve i'm not attached all i'm focused on is me and making sure that i can handle what's to come because that's my best service we've got to become that oak tree when when you know the floods of energy come or the floods of chaos or the floods of confusion whatever that's going to look like i have no idea we have to be those oak trees that people can grab onto the branches and kind of go, okay, because people don't realize that consciousness is contagious. Mm. And that's why the inner stability, I won't be very much longer. No, the it's all good. System, because if you're surrounded by people losing their minds and in fear, if you are not strong, you'll get hijacked into that energy. All of a sudden, the fear will kick in. All of a sudden, They'll be like, oh, my gosh, I don't know what's happening. You're running around like a crazy person. You're not sitting there 
in peace going, I know this is happening for the highest good. I know this is just what has to unfold. And that's where that inner strength has to come in. And that's where we need to be those lighthouses of mm -hmm. stability so that we can influence people into a state of peace and out of a state of panic and chaos. Yeah. Because I do feel it's going to get wild in whatever that looks yeah. like. It has to. Something massive has to happen for a big shift to take place. Because what's been happening over the last four years hasn't been a big enough catalyst. And I don't know how crazy it has to look for more people to go, oh, shit. <laughs> okay, what is going on here? Um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. nobody does. No. No. Nobody does know, but it's it's amazing to see the build up to it. You know, no one would have predicted the COVID situation, and, and I think that was a big wake up call for a lot of people. Like, I think people got to see, like, what the hell am I doing with my life? I just get up and I go work for these people. They don't care about me, and I leave my family and I send my kid to this place, and my parents to this other place, and then I leave. Like, for me, like that was a giant wake-up call I'm, I'm glad that it happened on some level i can't help but think it wasn't meant to happen like you know when you start looking back on events in your life you're like oh yeah of course that happened like that was a huge catalyst like that woke a lot of people up and in some ways it separates i mean we got a good look at who some of the fighters were and who are some of the people that need help you know and i i hope people look at it like that look there's a lot of people that need help and we got to see the fighters and we got to see the people that were not going to take it anymore, kind of lock arms and, and start looking for each other in a lot of ways. And I'm looking mm -hmm. forward to the next crisis or catalyst, whatever comes our way. It's, it's welcoming. Yeah, it definitely is. Yeah, it definitely is. I think, I think that was kind of where the first split almost happened. Yeah. Um, and It, it was a test of, of tenacity and holding strong to, yeah. to who you are. And it's, for me, I'm so grateful, you know, yeah. like I, I it, it was a saving grace for me because I realized how many other people knew what was going on. Because I, like I said, like for nine years at that stage, I had kept this information that I'd stumbled upon to myself. Mm. Um, and it was such a relief that there were other people that were on the same mission. Yeah. Um, and of course, you know, when, when I, when I found out the truth of what, what Trump was fighting, um, and I'm, I'm like not a, I'm only to politics or anything. I couldn't be bothered, but just the role that he was playing um and of course everything's backwards you know he was made to look like this and that and whatever everything's everything's a mirror but it was it was awesome to know that something so big was being addressed and there was an intention to overturn it all and i i, th I think as much as i never wanted to be a out there speaker <laughs> the the passion that was inside of me I couldn't not be a part of it. I couldn't not share it, especially when I knew there were there were others um, doing the same, and I wasn't crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I want yeah. to ask you: Do you know the story behind the Apono Pono, the Hawaiian prayer? Um, I I don't think I know it. Can you share it with me? So there was a psychologist. I, I don't know the exact hundred percent story, but a psychologist okay. who went to a mental asylum to work somewhere in Hawaii. And he'd done a lot of inner work and he understood that we are all connected. And this mental asylum was packed and he never saw a single patient. He looked at their files and their photos and he read everything that was wrong with them. And he basically took accountability for where those energetics were inside him. Mm. 
and he forgave those people and he healed himself without seeing a single patient they shut that asylum down and the prayer simply is i'm sorry please forgive me thank you i love you mm. and that is something that you can say towards yourself or you can say towards anybody else who has done something against you or whatever i mean um we have i have used it often in my life but that that's what he did he took accountability for those energetics that were inside him because we all carry the same consciousness yeah you know no one's no one's arrived no one's ascended the ego is still going to be on the planet until the last person has fully embodied which is going to be a few years i feel this is not going to be something that is just going to like poof. it's going to be butterflies unicorns and rainbows it's a transitionary process um but it was a profound story and you can you can do a bit of research on it but i just thought it was interesting to share because yeah. we're living there it was quite a few years ago but yeah so it was just that i'm sorry please forgive me thank you i love you saying that towards anybody that you may be holding anything against as well as massive forgiveness we have to give ourselves because it all starts yeah. with us first where we judge others is usually where we still have judgments carrying guilt no compassion for ourselves so yeah. i just want to do end with that little nugget yeah that's a beautiful one thank you for sharing that i i i'm gonna have to do some more research on it but i think i can already incorporate that into my day so i feel like i got to learn a lot it's it's amazing it's always cool to get to talk to people and and learn and share some stories and and walk away a little bit better so ladies and gentlemen i want to invite everybody go down to the show notes go check out mission limitless reach out to taryn reach out to ben and look forward to some beautiful things happening in your life but more than that if you feel called to become a better person know that you're not alone and it's going to take some work but you're strong enough and life is better on the other side if you're willing to have the courage to do it so taryn hang on shortly afterwards because i still want to talk to you briefly but ladies and gentlemen, thank you for hanging out with us today. I hope you have a beautiful day. I hope the sun is shining and the birds are singing and the wind is at your back. That's all we got for today, ladies and gentlemen. Aloha. Bye.